A manufacturer home has its own transfer disclosure statement. So if you ever, oh, by the way, manufacturer home also means mobile homes. Mobile homes are manufacturer homes. So if you ever have a customer who wants you to list a mobile home, use the manufacturer home, purchase agreement and joint instruction. Okay? So that's the first form we're going to look at. Let's look at that form. Notice that once I double click the form on the right hand side, that form is loaded into this folder. So this can be found in the contract folder. Okay? So when I want to look for certain uh, zip forms according to the different category, I can actually look for it. Uh, <clears throat> so let's look at that. Every single RPA package, whether it is for single family residence, for multi family, or for manufactured home, they should all contain the agency disclosure form. If you do not have agency disclosure form, when you sign the listing agreement, if you if did not provide agency disclosure to your seller, you do not have a valid listing agreement. So to make it easy for you, you don't even have to try to remember if you use the zip form because the zip form agency disclosure is automatically included in the package. So you will never forget. However, when you switch to air form, you got to be careful. In air form, sometimes the package does not contain agency disclosure. So you must always remember to provide agency disclosure, okay? Uh, of course, you will fill out the seller's name. Now, where do you put the seller's name? You go back. You go back here, okay? You see the parties here? You click it. Seller one, since this is a listing agreement, okay? And this is called seller one. Let's say John, the name of the client is uh, John Smith. Put a middle name if there's a middle name, okay? So you'll be John Smith, whatever his email is, okay? You just type that. I usually don't care about inputting this unless you really need it because most of the time when you fill out zip form, the zip form does not ask for the seller's address, but sometimes it does. So if the zip form asks for seller's address, this is a good place where you're going to input the seller's address. Uh, the phone number for the seller usually not required. So these are the essential pieces of information. Okay. So you go ahead and save that. So you got John Smith, seller one. The next person you want to create is this one here. Listing broker, right? So uh, broker firm name, in my case, I've had this in memory already. So I just click it, okay? What matters is a broker firm name. If you are a salesperson completing this form, skip broker name. Broker name is already in the firm name. Do not type in Kenny Tan here. It will cause confusion, okay? Do not type in Kenny Tan here, all right? Okay, leave it blank. All right, because you know why when you prepare listing agreement, I don't ever have to sign your listing agreement. Remember that. You are the one signing the listing agreement. So do not include my name in here. All right. Let's put down Santa Mac uh, Realty Inc. Okay. And then as far as phone number, if you are in Fremont, you will be using 
510-500-1180, right? Broker office ID here. This is where you put Centermax license, BIE license number, okay? Right here, this one here, 014, this number right here, 0149820. All right? Agent name, you leave it blank, okay? Leave agent name blank. Broker fax, this is the fax number you put. You, if you want to put your own fax number, that's fine, okay? Because uh, sometimes it's actually more convenient if you put your own fax number instead of the office fax number. Because if you put the office fax number, it comes in, uh, Lisa will see it and she'll just forward it to you. But if you want it to go to you directly, then uh, use your own fax number here, okay? Don't put uh, the uh, office uh, fax number, okay? So, uh, so, but I will just use this number for now, okay? You decide what number you want to use. Agent ID is where you put your salesperson's VIE number on the agent ID. So you leave broker name blank and you leave agent name blank, okay? Got that? If you forget, you can always come and uh, watch this video. Agent phone number, you can leave it blank or you can put in your cell phone number here. Because the zip form retrieve the agent's name from agent ID number, not from agent name. Zip form retrieves the agent name from agent ID number. That's why this is where you put agent's name. Rita Leo, for example, right? Agent okay. ID. That's right. Oh, no, no, sorry, sorry. I mean, <laughs> uh, Rita's BIE number, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 0192789, whatever, okay? You know what I mean, right? So this is where you put your BIE number, the A salesperson's BIE number, okay? Sorry about that, I, I meant to say that, BIE number. So you got the office, BIE, the uh, center back realty's BIE number, depending on which office you're with, okay? Because uh, Sentiment OC has his own BIE number and then Sentiment International will have his own uh, BIE number. Agent ID is where you put your personal BIE number. That's the agent ID number. Agent phone number, you can leave it blank because usually on the form, you just put in your cell phone number. Okay, all right? Leave this blank because you already have it here. You do not put agent's license number here. This is redundant, okay? And we don't even put agent's phone number because we don't ever give out our home phone number, do we? We don't. Email, make sure you put in your email, right? So you put in your email here. And this is where you put in your cell phone number, okay? Okay, so you got cell phone number here. And then business fax number, we already got broker fax number, which is the same as the business fax number, okay? Uh, it really doesn't matter if you repeat it because uh, it doesn't hurt. If you're not sure, you just put in the fax number twice, okay? And then street address is just a center max a street address at Fremont, if you're with uh, Fremont, right? So, in our case, you got, this is already in memory, so usually I just go ahead and use what we've used before, okay? And uh, so I got Fremont here, California, and then the zip code, 94539, okay? This is just using Fremont as an example. 
So whatever office that you belong to, you use that office address. Do not use Fremont's address. Okay. Now that reminds me, when you do your uh, commission instruction or broker demand, make sure you ask them to send the commission checks to Diamond Bar. If you belong to Sacramento, Fremont, and Diamond Bar. But if you belong to some other offices such as Arcadia, San Diego, and Newport Beach, you ask them to send commission check to those offices. So all the Diamond Bar, Sacramento, and, and uh, Fremont, you should all have your commission check sent to Diamond Bar. That's where we process all your commission checks. Okay? However, on your zip form, if you belong to Fremont, please put Fremont's address on the zip form. It's just that the commission check must be sent to Diamond Bar. But the form should have Fremont's address if you're part of the Fremont uh, agent. Okay? To Diamond Bar. If you're Fremont, you send commission check to Diamond Bar. Okay? This is just the address on the Fremont because they have to use an address. Okay? Remember, your commission check is processed in Diamond Bar. Okay? Don't have it sent here. There'll be a delay. Okay? Uh, because uh, all the accounting is done in Diamond Bar. So you got these forms all set up already. What else do you need to set up? Right now it's just the listing broker and the uh, seller. You do not need anybody else. It's just the listing agreement, right? Oh, one thing you need is the property address, right? So you need to go back and set up the property address, property information. Uh, sorry about that. I think I messed up over here. Open. Now, to set up property, oh, the property is just right here in front of me, right? So you can set up the property address. Now, for those of you that have MLS <coughs> Connect, in case you don't know what MLS Connect means, let's say, for example, uh, <clears throat> Uh, you sign a listing agreement and you publish the listing on the MLS. And once you publish the listing on the MLS, the MLS will give you a number. If you put in the MLS number here and you do what we call the MLS Connect, this will be automatically populated for you from the MLS. It's like a magical thing when you do an MLS Connect. You don't have to type any of this. Assuming that information that you type into the MLS is 100% correct, mm -hmm. then whatever information that comes from the MLS that will populate this, uh, this form here will be 100% correct. And you save time. You don't have to retype this. However, for the uh, listing state, most likely it's not in the MLS yet, so you have kind of just kind of type it. The MLS Connect is only useful when you represent the buyer and not the seller. Mm -hmm. Because if you represent the seller, you would have manually input this information before you can do any mm -hmm. MLS Connect, right? So, for example, this one here, the street address is 123 Main Street, okay? So I'm just going to uh, type it. And then unit number, this is the space number. My space number is 100. This is a mobile home, that's why it has a space number, okay? So this is uh, Milpitas, okay? Milpitas is in Santa Clara County, correct? The state of California, it's a CA. Give me a zip code in Milpitas, Grace. 95035. okay? All right. Uh, this is really most important because this will actually be imported into the form. That's why I have to make sure that this information is correct. 
Now if I save this thing, okay? Now it's time to look at my form, okay? Now, where was my form stored? I think it was in contract, right? So, I open it. Why is it that this information is not imported? Okay, it should be imported already. I got John Smith over here. Somehow he got John Smith, right? Uh, so if it's not important automatically, you just go ahead and type it in. Okay, sometimes the, the form is to give you strange behaviors. Uh, if it's not important, you go ahead and type it in. Tell us name, right? You go ahead and click this. Uh, wait a minute. Did I did I use the wrong form? Let's see here. Did I use uh, listing agreement or RPA? Ah, no wonder. I used the wrong form. So I got to import the right form, right? So listing agreement. Hey, wait a minute. Now you start wondering, how come there's no listing agreement? All you got is listing addendum. The reason is for manufacturer home, you still use your listing agreement form like in single family residence, except you include an extra form. That extra form is called listing addendum, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to import this uh, listing addendum and then I am going to look for my RP, uh, my uh, this uh, residential listing agreement. Okay, it's the same listing agreement form that you use for manufacture home. Okay, it's not showing up. How about I type in uh, listing here? You know why it's not showing up? Because they shortened the word residential. They named the form RES period, whereas I type residential complete word. That's why it's not showing up. So sometimes if you see that you type a name of a form, it's not showing up, just use one single word. It will show up. A whole bunch of them will show up, and then you're going to see this one. This is the standard residential listing agreement, so you're going to import this, right? Okay. So. If I'm signing a listing agreement with the seller for a mobile home, the two forms that I need will be the residential listing agreement exclusive. We always use the exclusive right to sell unless you have a unique situation. Always use the exclusive right to sell for mobile home. And then you got the addendum, right? Okay, now if I open this, I think this is the right form, so everything should be populated, I think. See, now everything is populated, right? John Smith, Center Mac Realty Inc. Okay, I don't have the agent's name. Let's say uh, agent is Rita. Okay. All right. So, so you got the agency disclosure. And the next form is also an automatic form. It's called the possible representation of more than one buyer or seller, disclosure and consent. The purpose of this form is to address situation where you represent more than one buyer or you represent more than one seller or you represent both the buyer and the seller. If it is any one of those situations, you are completely covered. However, what if you only represent one person, which is a seller? Is this form still appropriate? Yes, it is, because of the word possible. So by inserting the word possible, they cover all situations. So this becomes a standard form. So you never have to worry about calling me or contacting uh, Steve, uh, this, uh, Tiffany to specially draft a disclosure and consent to cover any of the three situations that I just mentioned. This form is automatically included. Okay? That's why this form is very handy. So can you, if I'm a dual agency, I should use this one as well? It's covered. Even if you're a dual agent, this form covers it. 
okay? You don't need another form. This form covers dual agency, okay? All right? Okay. All right, so this is done. You see, this is all uh, populated, right? It's got the seller's name. And then it's got Santamac Realty's uh, name, phone number, the agent's name, and then the agent's uh, phone number. I mean, the agent's VIE number, okay? The rest is uh, for you to fill out later on, and then it's got the property address because I input the property address, okay? All right. <laughs> and uh, it's got the seller's name all uh, populated, okay? Now, this is a listing agreement, just like any other listing agreement. Uh, you should go ahead and insert the date you prepare it, which is January 15, right? And then also you will have uh, name of the seller, Santa Mac Realty Inc.'s name and the property address. See, property address is automatically a populator. Okay. Now, the listing period, you just go and insert the listing period. What's company policy on the listing period? As long as you need it or as short as you're willing to do. I do not have any restriction on how long it can be or how short it can be. However, there are recommendations, okay? So there is no company policy on how long it should be or how short it should be. There's only company recommendations. It can be as short as you're comfortable with or as long as your seller is comfortable with. But typically, how long you do a listing depends on the following factors. First of all, are there any legal issues that have to be resolved? Do you need to evict any tenants before you can put it on the market? Do you need to file a lawsuit in order to remove the tenant? All of these factors, and then you may have clients that say, well, I love you as an agent, but I'm not ready to put on the market yet. I'm more than happy to sign the agreement now. However, I'm not ready to put it on the market yet. So you have a signed listing, but the commencement date is later date, okay? You could sign it today, but it commences on April 1st. It, if that's the case, do you have a valid listing agreement still? You do. Just because the commencement date is later, does not mean that you don't have a valid uh, listing agreement. You still have a valid listing agreement. If you sign a listing agreement with a client to commence on April 1st, and then behind your back, that client sign another agreement with another agent, is that client uh, in violation of the listing agreement? Yes, because uh, he's uh, exclusive with you already even though it does not commence until April 1st, okay? So how about we do this? We do a six months uh, listing, okay? So that will push us around when? Uh, is it July or what? July 15? Huh? Let's say July 14. Is that six months? Around six months, right? July 14, 2018, okay? Got it. So you got a six months listing, it appears, okay? And then, uh, ah, here's a relevant box you need to check because this is a manufactured home. It's a mobile home, right? So you got to check this box. Don't forget. And then it says, see addendum for additional terms, right? That's that's uh, that's why you need the other form because you need the addendum, right? Okay. Now the listings price. Now let's say, for example, we want to list this uh, mobile home for 150,000. Uh, who knows how much the uh, average uh, mobile home in Milpitas? Um, three sixty four hundred. About four hundred thousand in yeah. Milpitas for mobile home. Mobile, 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 mobile
All right, never mind. I'll put I'll put two hundred and fifty thousand, okay? Two hundred and fifty thousand is about right, okay? In uh, Milvidas. All right. All right. Now the listing terms I usually leave it blank because there's nothing else there's nothing I need to say here, so I'll leave it blank. But in case you have any listing terms here that you need to uh, put in, go ahead and insert it here, okay? Now mobile home, let's say I list this one for uh, six percent, okay? Six percent is the total commission for mobile home. Would you recommend that for mobile home? Because the, the value is low. Yeah, the value is low. Myself recommend six percent. Okay. It's so low. Six percent makes more sense anyway. Okay. Now the you know here's a two is where you enter your safety period though. Okay. Two is where you enter your safety period. What's company policy on safety period? None. I do not have a policy on safety period. If you don't have one, you will not be punished. What's recommended? Frankly, I think whether you have one or not truly depend on your relationship with the seller. You have a strong relationship with the seller. Having one is not important. If seller is uh, an average seller with whom you don't have a strong relationship, uh, I think you can have it as long as you want, but be reasonable. I have seen a one year, 365 days uh, safety period. I'm, I, I'm not kidding, I've seen it. I've seen the listing agreement that's one year long, and then the safety period is one year. To me, that's taking big advantage of your seller, especially on an average single family residence. There's no reason to have a one year safety period. You basically tie up the property, right? Uh, so that is a concern. So usually I just put, uh, you know, I don't really care. I put uh, 60 days, you know. You want to use some of the longer one, it's up to you, but be reasonable, okay? Uh, now this is where you put uh, what your split is with the other agent. Since I'm getting 6%, I put down 3.0. Oh, how's that? Okay. Uh, you can express it in terms of flat fee. Sometimes you use flat fee, you know. Usually it's in terms of percentage, but that's totally up to you though, right? Okay. Now the rest of it, you know, this is a mobile home, so you, you probably don't have any of this uh, lease item. Have you ever seen a solar panel on mobile home? Anybody seen solar panel on mobile home? No. You think a mobile home might have water softeners? Possible. What's wrong, right? It could have water softener on mobile home. So you need to pay attention to this. Uh, you know, possible uh, propane tank, we don't know, okay? So it could be lease, or it could be lean. If it has solar system, uh, sometimes it could be lean though. Okay, and then you type in the MLS that you belong to. And because this, this is in Milpitas, I type in what, Silva, right? No, not so bad. This will be a MLS listing. Okay. Okay. So you'll be on the MLS listing. And the rest are just standard language, so I don't have to make any changes. Okay. Now, in terms of uh, duties, you always uh, need to discuss with your seller what report you want the seller to pay and when you would like the seller to pay for that report. Uh, usually, I think for mobile home, maybe not so much, right? So you can leave it blank. But single family rest, and you need to think about homeowners association documents. Now, you should, this one, of course, uh, if you have a homeowner association, you want to check this box because he needs to pay for this, right? Uh, general property inspection, maybe. Pest control, probably not. 
and then here wherever you see a box you need to pay attention now uh Charlotte agrees that broker may photograph certainly you want your your seller to agree right sometimes they don't agree if they don't agree it's a special case so you check the box here okay all right and uh, sometimes they don't want you to publish on the MLS okay it says here, seller instructs broker to publish an MLS that taking of images is limited to those persons preparing appraisal and inspection reports. Again, this is a special case, so you only check it if it applies. Okay. Now, this one, a key box and key save and lock box, uh, that's usually allowed unless it's not a stated that's, that's not, if your seller does not allow it, you check it here. Okay. All right. Additional terms. If you have any additional terms, uh, insert it here. Otherwise, we'll be blamed. Okay. Representative capacity, when do you check it? You check it in case you're dealing with a trust or corporation or LLC. Then you have to check it here. If you check this here, there's another form uh, that you have to uh, import. In this case, the system will import the form automatically for you if you check this box. But if you uncheck it, then, uh, you know, this form will not be imported for you. And so this is finished, and then you have the seller advisory, which is automatic form, okay? So you're done with the uh, listing agreement, right? Saved, okay, yeah, I forgot to save it. It's important to save it, though. Representative capacity signature, as I said, if it's for non-individual, like a trust or LLC or corporation. Listing addendum for a mobile home, don't forget, this is the form you want to include, okay? Uh, this is an addendum to RPA, so you don't do anything here. And personal property manufacturer home. Most more manufacturer home are personal property. If they are, they are usually on lease or rental land. Most of them are like that, okay? Now, sometimes a manufacturer home will be sold with the real property. If it's the latter situation, you check this one here. But most cases, you'll be box A, okay? Purchase price allocated as follows. In this case, our mobile home's price is 250000 okay? No land here. Land will be zero because uh, it doesn't come with land. Uh, for personal property manufacturer home only, you're supposed to put in the manufacturer's name the model, date of manufacture, date of first sale. You get this information from your seller, okay? The seller has documentation, so you get it from your seller, okay? Uh, but it has to be filled out. And then you put in the approximate width, the length, and the expando size. To be honest with you, I'm not sure what expando size is, so figure out what expando size is, okay? Put it in here. And then you got your license number or decal number, put it in here. And then the serial number, put it in here, okay? Uh, since we are not dealing with real property manufacturer home, we'll skip this one, okay? Most of the time, you're dealing with personal property manufacturer home, okay? And, uh, and then you go ahead and uh, save it. You are done, save that, save right here, okay? That completes the two forms. Now, if you want to share your uh, work with me, sometimes you want me to check your work, there's a share button that you want to use, okay? This uh, share button right here, if you share here, you can share the form with whoever you want to share with, okay? And you want to create a private share with me, you go ahead and add my, uh, myself. For example, uh, since I'm not, on your form, you have to create transaction party. So basically, you will share with me. You will include one more person here, which is me, okay, if you want to share with me. If you do that sharing thing, then I'll be able to see your documents and make corrections on your document without telling you what to do, right? Save me a lot of time and save me a lot of time. Once I share it, I'll save it, and I'll tell you that I have reviewed it, revised it, and approved it and then you can go ahead and use it, okay? And then once you've done that, 
The next thing you do is to do the E sign, right? Now, if you've never done E sign, you come in here. And then you create your E sign. Now, today, I'm not going to teach you E sign because uh, we started late. Uh, but I just want to tell you that if you want to do E sign, you kind of come in here, give it a name, you know. For example, it's 123 um, Main Street, right? Whatever the name you want to give for that package, that's fine. Because this is the name that I see when you send me the share file. And then uh, you have a choice of DocuSign or GibLogix. But if you are new, you don't have DocuSign uh, subscription yet, all you see is just GibLogix. GibLogix is free. DocuSign, you have to pay for it. Okay? So my recommendation is, initially, try Doc try GibLogix because it doesn't cost you anything. Use GibLogix, and then once you decided that DocuSign works better, then you subscribe to DocuSign. But these days, <clears throat> they made so much improvement to GibLogix. Maybe DocuSign subscription does not become important anymore. I've seen a lot of improvement with GibLogix now. I'm not kidding you. A lot of uh, improvement. Okay. So uh, I've tried GibLogix lately, and it works very well. Okay. All right. Just so you know. So you go through the E sign, and then you get all the signatures done. And then once the signatures is done, uh, it will come back. Uh, there is probably another folder created for all the e sign documents <coughs> that have been completed. So those documents are here. You want to slowly transfer these documents to the Google Drive. If you have uh, interim document that is saved in here, uh, you can store them here temporarily until you're ready to move everything all at once. Because you know why sometimes to save time, you may kind of like uh, move all these uh, e-sign documents to any of these six folders. And then when you are ready for me to review your work, and then you move them over. But my recommendation is, is, is that if time permits, you always want to get these documents into the Google Drive folder. That way, I can decide to come in and look at your documents while your escrow is pending. Instead of waiting until the last minute, just before the escrow close, which I may not have time to check at that time. So if you move them quickly into these folders, from time to time I can come in and check your work. If I see something's missing, I'll tell you about it. Okay? Now, if you're new to a transaction, there's one other thing I want to show you, which is what we call the checklist. An agent folder will have the checklist. The checklist will help you decide to see if you have all the documents that you need for the transaction. So you come to the agents folder and you can look for checklist that's in here. New agent checklist, but that's not what I was looking for. Uh, what I was looking for is a transaction checklist. Okay. This one will tell you one to four dwelling unit. Now, obviously, uh, this uh, manufacturer home does not have its own checklist, but the same checklist would apply to manufacturer home. The only difference is that the listing agreement has an addendum. Uh, also, there may be some advisory that apply to manufacturer home that you saw earlier, okay, that may apply. Uh, this can be updated from time to time, but this is uh, whatever I have in here on the checklist is something that you can you can rely on and make sure that all the documents are there. Okay, these are all the documents that not all of them apply, but whatever that applies, you want to make sure that you have them in your folder. Okay, all right. So that's the checklist. All right. So you should know where the checklist is and get it and use it in every single transaction. That way you have a complete file. Okay? All right. Uh, looks like uh, that's the end of the training today. And thank you all for coming. Yeah.